Hey there, amazing viewers! Welcome back to Review and Recap. I'm thrilled to have you here as we embark on an exciting new chapter together. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and joining our incredible community of subscribers. Trust me, you won't want to miss out on the awesome content we have in store for you. Now, you might be wondering what this new chapter is all about. Well, let me tell you. It's all about explaining the plot synopsis of The Nun 2. The Nun 2 is a sequel to the horror film The Nun, released in 2018. It continues the story of a malevolent entity known as Valak, who takes the form of a demonic nun. The movie follows a group of individuals, including priests and investigators, as they confront the supernatural forces unleashed by Valak. We've been working hard behind the scenes to bring you even more valuable, entertaining, and inspiring videos that I know you'll love. In the picturesque town of Tarascon, France, the year is 1956, and the local church is a place of both solace and unimaginable horrors. Father Noiret and Jacques, two devoted servants of the church, perform their daily rituals, unaware that a sinister force lurks in the shadows, ready to shatter their peaceful existence. One fateful day, as Father Noiret investigates a disturbance, an inexplicable event unfolds. He is lifted into the air, engulfed in flames, and burned to death before the eyes of the horrified Jacques. The only remnants left behind are the priest's rosary, clutched tightly in Jacques's hands. This shocking incident sets the stage for a tale of supernatural terror that will span across time and space. Fast forward to the aftermath of the events at St. Cartha's Monastery, where Sister Irene finds herself serving in a convent in Italy. Meanwhile, Maurice, connected by destiny, works at a boarding school in France. He befriends a young Irish girl named Sophie, along with a teacher and her mother, Kate. Unbeknownst to them, Irene begins to experience haunting visions. In one such vision, Maurice pleads for her help, prompting Irene to embark on a harrowing journey. The Cardinal, recognizing Irene's unique abilities, assigns her a mission to investigate a series of mysterious deaths occurring across Europe. As Irene travels to Tarascon, she is accompanied by Sister Deborah, a novice who joins her without official permission. During their train journey, Deborah grapples with her skepticism about miracles, particularly the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Irene, in turn, patiently imparts the significance of faith to her companion. Upon arriving in Tarascon, Irene's visions intensify. She sees herself following Jacques into a foreboding alley, only to be confronted by Valak, a demonic entity assuming the form of a nun. The following morning, Deborah discloses a meeting with Jacques, who entrusts her with Father Noiret's rosary. Simultaneously, at the boarding school, Sophie becomes the target of bullying, leading to a chilling incident in the abandoned chapel. Irene and Deborah venture to the Palais des Papes, where they consult a knowledgeable librarian. Revelations unfold about the demon they are pursuing, a fallen angel rejected by God. The librarian connects the demonic presence to St. Lucy's family crest and the miraculous survival of her eyes. According to the librarian, the demon is targeting St. Lucy's descendants to acquire the relic, the preserved eyes, currently housed in a former monastery, now a modern-day boarding school. The investigation leads Irene and Deborah to the boarding school, where Maurice, Sophie, and Kate are entangled in the demonic web. Irene confronts Maurice, revealing the demon's presence within him. In a tragic turn of events, Maurice succumbs to the demonic influence, attacking Irene and Deborah. The abandoned chapel becomes a focal point as Sophie unveils a sinister game orchestrated by her tormentors. The game's climax exposes the location of St. Lucy's eyes, hidden beneath the chapel. In a desperate bid to protect the schoolgirls from the demon, Irene and Deborah separate from Kate and Sophie. The demonically possessed Morris escapes, triggering a destructive pursuit that culminates in the collapse of the bell tower building. Sophie, clutching the relic, becomes the target of Morris's wrath. Amidst the chaos, Irene discovers Sophie within the ruins. Deborah reunites with them, confessing her newfound faith in the face of the supernatural. The confrontation with Maurice escalates, leading to Irene using the relic against him. Maurice, under demonic influence, lifts Irene into the air, attempting to replicate the horrifying fate of Father Noiret. However, Irene, realizing her lineage as a descendant of Saint Lucy, taps into an ancient power associated with the relic, emerging unscathed. A climactic battle ensues, with Irene and Deborah invoking the words of institution, 
from Christian Eucharistic celebrations. In a miraculous twist, barrels of wine presented the former monastery transform into the blood of Christ. As the sacred blood engulfs Valak, the demon meets its demise, banished back to the depths of hell. In the aftermath of the supernatural ordeal, Irene, Debra, and the survivors find solace in the restored sanctity of the boarding school. The relics are safeguarded, and the echoes of demonic terror are silenced. As the curtains fall on this chilling chapter, the resilient spirits of Irene and Debra prevail, standing as beacons of faith against the forces of darkness that sought to corrupt the sacred lineage of St. Lucy. As we come to the end of this video, I want to hear from you. Your feedback, suggestions, and ideas are what make this channel truly special. So, whether you're a returning viewer or a brand new face, thank you for being here. Get ready for an incredible journey ahead. Hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and let's dive right into all new chapters together. Until next time, take care, stay positive, and keep spreading those good vibes. Sending you all a big virtual hug.